Hello everyone, thank you for joining me. Today we're going to do a quick video about our budget planners. At the moment they come in three designs. So we have the In Bloom design, we have our Revive design, and we have our Navigate design. Now I'll actually open this one up and just show you what the Navigate texture looks like because it's a pretty cool print. And um, I love looking at it up close. You see all, it looks textured, but it's absolutely flat. So that's our Navigate there, three designs. And uh, this year I have chosen to have the Revive design as my budget planner. Now I carry around my planner bag wherever I go and inside my planner bag, this year I have three products. So firstly, I have the planner that I am using for 2021, which is our Overcome design. And then I have an In Bloom slimline that looks like this. And what I use this for is every single day, I commit to one thing that I can do to work towards a really big goal that I've set for myself. So I only write things in this planner that I'm going to do that revolve around that one goal. So if I'm looking for what's on in the day, where I need to be, what needs to happen, what my list of three is, that's here. But when I'm sitting down working towards my big goal and intentionally thinking about what's the next small step that I can take, I use this design. Now inside of my planner bag, I also have my budget planner and we have made it our goal this year to, and many years in the past, we have made it our goal to cut down on our grocery budget. It's one of the areas that we often identify as having small leaks and anywhere where there are small leaks, they add up. And when we're trying to make a difference to our budget, we're looking for opportunities wherever we can to make a difference. Now, I should note before I start showing you how I use my budget planner this year, I should make a note that I am not a financial advisor. I cannot give you advice on how to do your finances. I can only share what works best for us and you need to make the decision of what's going to work best for you and your family. And I would highly recommend if you're in the position to, to reach out and get some financial advice from a professional. So whether that be from your bank, if they offer financial advice, uh, from a financial advisor or an accountant or a bookkeeper, there are people who have spent many years training in this area and can give you that advice. And certainly, whilst I know that for a lot of people, it's the last thing we think about, investing in that advice can save us a lot in the long term. So uh, this is simply what I'm using our budget planner for and how I use this planner. And I'm actually going to swap over to a dummy budget planner because we have made a decision and we continue to make this decision not to share actual figures of ours. We choose to keep that to ourselves. So what you are about to see are dummy figures and dummy expenses that have been made up that I can show you how I actually budget myself. The figures and the different things we are talking about though just aren't the things that we're budgeting for. So let's dive straight into it and talk through how I use my budget planner. Inside my planner bag with my budget planner is this little roll-on. It is called a stress roll-on. And I try to make finances as positive an experience as possible. And so I include little things like this. I normally make myself a cup of coffee or a cup of tea when I'm sitting down to do this. And I just try to make it something that I enjoy rather than something that I dread. So I grab my budget planner out and I'll just walk you through what is included in here. So you can put where the, or who the planner belongs to or a contact detail in case it's found. Always just be mindful of the information that you store in here. And then I set my 2000 2021 priorities. So what that is for me is when are our rates due? When are our telephone bills due? When do we have bigger expenses in our family that we need to budget for? So I do this first. Here's an example of what that looks like. So I first go through and do all the birthdays. So I put our immediate family's birthdays in there. Then I look at things like rates and when bass is due then if we have anything like a holiday planned or if we have to take into account school fees, uniforms and books, our wealth package that's due, I look at the year and I can instantly see which months are going to be bigger than others. 
Next is our expected expenses. So what I do is I go through and I work out what our monthly expected expenses are and add any of the bits and pieces that I have identified on the page before. Now, the way that I do this is I like to print out 12 months worth of bank statements and have a look at how much each month cost us on average and then use that average as a way to set myself up to consider how much I will need in the following year always allowing five to five to 10% wherever I can. Here's what that looks like for us. So our monthly expenses I write as ME. So you can see that on each of these. And I have used the previous year just to give me a rough average of the month's expenses. Remembering these numbers are made up. I do take into account though, if something is a one off in 2000, I don't include that for 2021. I'm just mindful of on average what we spend each month. And then I take into account things like uniforms, books, the rates that we looked at on this page, anyone's birthdays and for our holiday, what we've budgeted for Christmas, which is actually included in the monthly expenses. Our rates are also paid in advance and part of our monthly expenses. So I just have a look at what we have coming up in the year. And then I look at where our most expensive months are. So October would be very expensive because we in this setup have planned holiday and we've budgeted for that. There's an anniversary, a birthday, and then our standard monthly expenses. The next most expensive month is normally always January because it includes the boys' school things, and I have not yet included them in our monthly expenses. And Christmas is actually not that expensive for us because we put money aside for it each month. So every week we direct debit money for Christmas. So that's why this is lower than January, and that would come down if I started to include that in our weekly direct debits. Next is some of the more important pages in the budget planner. So we have our long-term financial priorities, short-term financial priorities, and then a savings tracker. So what our goal is to save each month, and then during the year, we can use it to see how we actually went. And then we have a few pages for savings trackers. So if you are looking to put money aside for something, you can track your progress here. And if you are wanting to track your progress on debt payouts, then you can do that as well. Just over the page, there's a few pages for that as well. So if you're paying off a car or a house or a personal loan, you can track them here. Here's an example of how to use those pages. So long-term goals, pay off our mortgage, have all our bills paid in advance, financial freedom, which looks different for everyone, short-term, so what I can focus on for 2021, pay an extra $50 each week into our mortgage, which would need to be taken into account in our monthly expenses for each month. Put $20 each week aside into a school account, reduce leaks in our grocery budget. And then I look at what my goal is to save for each month. In January and in December, and again in October, the amounts would be lower because Christmas happens here, start of school happens there, and the holiday we planned happens here. So I've broken it up into what would be achievable and worked out how much that would add up to for the year and then I would decide where that money is going. So what am I saving for? On this side, one of the savings trackers has been used to show how you might set aside savings for 2022 school equipment or uniforms. So my savings goal was $450 based on uniforms being 300 and books being 150. So those figures are gonna be different for everyone when I wanted to have it saved by. And then I worked out there's 25 lines here so if I need to save $450, each of these increments would be $18. So every time I get $18, I can color in the next lot. And of course you can use colors, highlighters, all sorts of things to make that page as appealing as possible and to enjoy the progress as you make it. I think it's really important to celebrate the small steps. So there's space for you to put the amount you have saved and the date and you can add as you go. So I started with $18 added another lot, I'm up to $36 there, keep track of that. I use the debt payment trackers to track my debt payment for the year. So in 2021, one of my debt payment trackers is to get our mortgage down to a certain amount. So I would put the amount here 
uh, how much is owing, the goal due date, and then I can start tracking as I pay down our debt. And up really close, you can see there, there is space for you to see how far you are in your debt payment tracker journey for that year. Of course, you could do it for the life of your mortgage or the life of the loan you're doing, but just be mindful that if you're going to get a new budget planner each year, you want to make your debt payment tracker specific to the year that you are in. And here is what this might look like now. This is made up, so there's no interest taken into account here, which would be a wonderful world, but here we go. If our, our goal was $30,000 towards our mortgage, we would work out how much we'd have to pay each week by dividing by 52 and deciding on our amount. So that would link to this goal that we set here of putting an extra $50 in each week. So we'd need to make sure that we normally wouldn't have to pay more than 525 to achieve that goal. I put the amount that's owing on this imaginary mortgage and the due date. And then every time I put money into the account that I was paying down the debt from, I would write the balance. Now, like I say, this balance doesn't take into account interest, so it wouldn't go down this fast. We'd have to keep an eye on the bank statement, but it allows you to see your progress as you watch your bank statement and to have a look at what your interest is, to look at whether it's something you should talk to your bank about, to look around and see what the best interest rate is for your bank. Being aware of these things really has helped me in the past to actively know what's going on in my bank account. And when I know what's going on with a particular loan, I'm more likely to put positive changes into place that make a difference and save me money. All right, now we're at one of my favorite parts of the planner and lucky it is one of my favorite parts because this part is repeated throughout the budget planner. I know that you can get apps to track your budget and there's all sorts of different ways that you can choose to budget. For me, I have tried many, many different apps and many different ways of recording my budget on paper. And I feel like it changes all the time what works best for me. But at the moment, whilst we are looking so closely at our grocery budget, it is really paid for me to sit down every Wednesday with my budget planner and my online banking on my phone. And I go through and each and every day, I write out what we spent on that particular day that had nothing to do with things that were budgeted for. So as an example, on the first, these are all made up, but Coles, $17, Zarafas, $15. On the second, Bunnings, $8.98, super cheap, $22. I physically write down only the items that appear on my internet banking that were not budgeted for. So when I say not budgeted for, of course, anything that revolves around groceries or coffee is budgeted in our grocery budget. So technically it's budgeted for, but they are the parts of my budget that aren't fixed every week and they can change from week to week, as in we can spend more one week and less another. So sitting down and actively writing out any extra expenses that I hadn't planned for any groceries that we have purchased or any eating out or any coffee that goes handwritten into here. And what I do is I break up the side of the planner into the week. So this year, January, uh, the first week went from the first to the fifth, of course, because December 30th and 31st was the start of the week. And then I broke up from the sixth to the 12th. That was the next week. And I go through and I only add up the grocery, food, coffee, eating out, anything to do with food, I add it up and I write it on the side here. So in this week, we spent $195.60 in groceries. Remembering for us, we include date night, coffees and groceries in that amount. And then the second week, I spent $200. Now that is important because I have a grocery budget that I am trying to stick to. So I'm going to flip the camera around so that I can talk through and you can see without it being mirror image, how I normally set up our budget in our weekly budget planner. All right, so this one is the sample one. If you look really closely in the background here, that is my actual budget planner. And you can see that I'm not making it up. That's actually what I do. And I actually go through with the highlighter and I highlight any of the ones that are related to my focus, which is the grocery budget. So this is what it looks like. Of course, normally it would be full by the end of the month. And here is how I use the weekly budgeting pages. So if you have two incomes, there is space for that. There is also a third space for other income that came from feedback from people that have rental properties or child support 
they chose to set up their budget slightly differently. So these are made up figures. This is income one, this is income two, and so that is our total income. And then what I do is I go through a standard week and I plan out what we have budgeted for. So normally in any week, we budget for our mortgage, home insurance, electricity, gas, rates, groceries, fuel, car insurance, private health, and school fees. It's going to be different for everyone. Once you have done this once in your weekly budget, you can then call this your weekly budget or weekly expenses. So remember how I had ME before for our monthly expenses? You can do WE for your weekly expenses, which means that once you've worked out what your standard weekly expenses are, when you write a new budget, you don't need to write them all out again. So what you can do is just put WE and the amount that you calculated it would be, so that being 1270 So if that is what you pay in direct debits every week, then you don't need to write out these things every time. When you do a new weekly budget, you can start with that and then add any additional expenses for that week. So that can save you a little bit of time. Once I've gone through and budgeted our weekly expenses and come up with the total, I then look at what is the difference between the income and the total. In this case, $180. I decide how much of it is going to savings, which means that when I looked at this, this made up savings figure is probably too low because if I can save $50 a week, then in January, I can probably save more than $50 for the month. And depending on if you're doing a zero budget or not, if you're doing a zero budget, you would have, want to have nothing left in spending. You would want to account for where all of this is going. And at times, certainly we have done that. In this instance here, we have a spending card and this is what we have aside for any expenses that pop up that perhaps we hadn't budgeted. So things that may happen, like a tyre needs to be fixed, or if we look over here at some of the things we've written in, things like having to get something from Super Cheap or from Bunnings or this trip to the arcade, or maybe when we went through the Brisbane Tunnel, those sorts of things that aren't part of our normally we normal weekly expenses, they would come out of this amount of money. Now, I'm going to do a separate video on how this works with our cash wallet system and show how it can work with both bank cards and with cash itself. But that is how we set up our budget planner. And as you go through, you will see there are there's enough pages, weekly budgeting pages, for every single week of the year and every month has this section where you can intentionally write things out. Either you can use it to plan for the month ahead or you can do what you saw I showed in January and go through and become really mindful of where your money is going and making sure that if there's anything that needs to be addressed that you highlight it and that you try and remove it as an unnecessary expense in the next month. Towards the back of the budget planner because I know people love uh, notes and idea pages. There are so many notes and idea pages there. So if you're wanting to do some maths calculations or just take some notes, you can do that in these pages. And we also have this highly requested back page called Nearly Bought It. And when you're considering purchasing something that isn't necessarily a need, you may choose to write it in here and the amount and then visit this again and see whether you feel like you still need it or want it the day after or the week after. And when you look back at this, you'll see how much money you were able to save by intentionally thinking through whether you actually needed something that you saw in the shops. Well, I hope that helped. That is just a very quick walk through our budget planner. Of course, you can make this work for you. So we have created it to be as versatile as possible. What you saw me share and the way that I choose to do it doesn't mean you need to do it the same way. Make it work for you. I would love to hear your different ideas. And if you have any questions, please let me know because I can always add to this video. Have a great day, everyone, and happy budgeting.